Hey guys, and welcome back to Unfuck Your Bodybuilding. Last episode, we talked about general adaptation syndrome and how it explains your body's response to training. And today we're gonna to use that lesson to understand the difference between training for size and training for strength. Everybody has probably seen a powerlifter who is enormously strong for his size and a bodybuilder who's enormously large for his level of strength. And I wanna explain why that's possible and how you can actually tailor your own training for your goals, whether it's to be big, strong, or both. Now this series is focused on gaining size, so that's really the only one I'm gonna talk about. And in my opinion, the way to maximize your training for size is to get the most out of the least amount of progressive resistance training possible. The reason for that, if we think back to general adaptation syndrome, if you're able to break down your muscle tissue just enough to trigger growth, then you'll be able to recover faster, you'll be able to train more frequently, and you'll make more progress over a smaller period of time. The secret is learning to get the most out of your training without having to resort to high levels of volume. And that requires a technical mastery of lifts to the point where you're able to maintain a mind-muscle connection even while pushing to absolute failure. When you're able to do that, you're able to get so much stimulus out of just one or two or maybe three sets of an exercise that you're not required to train with the absurd levels of volume that break your body down past the point where it can recover. As you progress through your training career, you're going to get more and more efficient, proficient at this technique. And in future episodes, I'm gonna talk about how to structure your training based on your level of proficiency. But today I just want to give you an example of what I mean so you can understand what you should be striving for each and every training session. I am very, very proficient at the squat and deadlift. I'm very strong at them, but that's really because I have very good technique and I'm able to hold that technique even when I'm pushing very, very hard. I can deadlift to the point where my face is going to pop off and my form is still not going to break down. Contrast that with training the bench press where when the weight starts to get very heavy, or when I start pushing towards failure, my technique is going to break down. My elbows will flare, I'll shift emphasis to my front delts, my bar path will deviate, it's just not a good look. Because I am so proficient at the squat and the deadlift, I'm actually able to engage the muscle groups that I want to focus on and push them to absolute failure. I can do so safely and I can do so productively and I can do so with a very, very heavy weight. That means I don't need to use a lot of training volume on my squat or my deadlift or my back or leg movements in order to stimulate growth. I think it's pretty self-evident that if you're doing a set of squats to failure with 600 pounds for 10 reps, that's going to force your body to grow. That's really, really hard, right? Contrast that with the bench press where if I go to absolute failure, I'm not really gonna be able to train my pecs. I'm really gonna be able to train my, my delts and you know, <laughs> fuck up my rotator cuff, but I'm not gonna be able to get that much out of the set, and I'm not gonna be able to use nearly as much weight. So, in the bench press, I'm gonna need a lot more volume, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. But the goal is, wherever you're at now, you wanna to get to that level of proficiency where you can push to absolute failure with heavy weight while maintaining a mind-muscle connection. It is a skill that can be learned. Just like in, the, in powerlifting, you can learn to grind through a rep. You've seen those people who they hit the sticking point and they're done, versus those people who st hit the sticking point and the rep slows down, it gets really, really slow, but they can keep pushing, they can keep pushing, they can complete the rep cleanly. You wanna develop that ability to grind for bodybuilding, but grinding requires keeping perfect technique and maintaining tension on the muscle in question. Again, this is a skill that can be developed through different forms of training, and as you progress through your, through your training career, you will need different forms of training to get the most progress possible. That's all I want to talk about for this lesson because I know it is kind of a complicated topic and my concern is that I haven't communicated it clearly. So what I'm asking you guys for this episode is please leave questions below so that I can answer and kind of express myself. I am better at writing than I am about speaking. I'm going to try and answer these questions as best as I possibly can. I want to make sure you guys really, really understand what I'm trying to communicate here. And once we've got that down, we're going to go and we're going to start talking about, okay, in terms of training, what does this look like? If I'm just starting out, how am I going to develop that ability? All right. So that's where we're at now. I know it was a short lesson, 
I'm gonna try and treat this kind of like a classroom type deal. But if you could provide that feedback, it would be really helpful for me and hopefully it'll be helpful for you as well.